let's go and get the uh, an expert. You like opinion. it, don't you? Well, I will. Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm all for. I'm all for trying to win a penalty and con e- the referee. Even like that. Even, yeah, but I mean, there's there's time there's time in the place. Let's go and speak to former Premier League uh, referee, all round good egg, uh, Mr. Keith Hackett. He joins us now. Keith, uh, good good evening and uh, a merry Christmas. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, delighted to be on your show. Oh, thank you, Keith. Now, listen, Keith. Right? I'm I'm I love the dark arts of football. <laughs> right? oh, I, disgusting. I, 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 yes, and there's a there's a there's a point in certain in certain games where you look back and say the game the result changed certainly over before VAR but games can change on either winning a penalty or the referee getting the decision wrong or being manipulated I I don't mind that Keith I don't know what you think of that as a referee because players try to con you don't they they try to con the referee they've always they've always attempted to do that but I think it's getting more difficult because I mean this was pantomime season early uh, this particular <laughs> one um, but it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult for referees to actually make accurate calls on active simulation, which is a yellow card offence, mm. uh, because either they're not, they've not got the right view or viewing angle, or they don't want to doubt the integrity of a player. And I think as a consequence, we're seeing a growth of simulation. It's cheating, Jason, it's cheating. It's not cheating, uh, Keith. It's not cheating. <laughs> It's bending the rules, Keith. Well, the rules are quite clear that if a player commits an act of simulation, that's a yellow card offence. And um, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that on a a regular basis. Um, And neither are we actually seeing referees confront the player who's uh, acted to con him. And uh, I think we just need to be a bit more vigilant. The the problem we've got is a referee will build up a catalogue of those players that he sees diving in other matches that he's not officiating and might go in with a preconceived mm. dive and he gives it when it's uh, a dive or he doesn't give it when he should be giving it for a for a penalty kick. Mm. So Keith, that one last night uh, from Estepinian, which was, as you said, their pantomime seasons early, that, if there was VAR, I'm guessing he would have been booked for that, for simulation. Well, the, 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 problem, the problem we've got is that there needs to be further clarity on VAR with acts of simulation. I'm with you that this this player should should have been cautioned. Or, alternatively, we do what Scotland FA does and we deal with these on a retrospective basis. Mm. Really, stop an escalation. Uh, because the, the thing that worries me is you could have a player who's uh, died, cheated, the referee awards a penalty kick and then pushes out a yellow, ca- a red card in the case of the defender who's done nothing wrong because they've got it wrong. And, and I think this is the danger we have, particularly with the Caribou Cup and, the, and, you know, the championship where VAR is not in operation. Look, Keith, I'm all for retrospective punishment. When I say I'm all for a dive, I'm all trying to win the game at any costs. So if I've got anyone, that, any Chelsea player that goes down in the box, hardly touched, wins a penalty, Chelsea win the game. I don't care if it's a dive as long as Chelsea win the game. But I'm all for retrospective punishment as well. So, 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 you, so basically you want the three points and the and no, then no, get punished. It, it, yeah, but I, I've got no problem with that. It's at that moment, on that particular time, <laughs> on the pitch, you try to do what you can for your team to win that game. Of, look, it makes me laugh when, when we always look at defenders, right, and say... Uh, sorry, attackers, when defenders, they dive. Defenders are pulling shirts. Defenders are doing the dark uh-huh. arts in a very, very different way, yet never gets highlighted and gets overlooked. Yet, how many times do you see shirts being pulled in the box? Retrospectively, oh, why don't we punish that more often then? Well, I, I think we should. I mean, look, the, we had the, the classic case, didn't we, England-Iran, when Harry, uh, sorry, Harry Maguire was yes. rest oh. to the group. Yeah. And the referee and VAR didn't do anything. I mean, so it is a problem area, and I'm, I'm with you. I think that we've got to get these decisions where the, the law is being broken, mm-hmm. that we've got to be accurate and deal with it in the, in the right manner. And I think sometimes retrospective punishment, particularly on simulation, because it is such a difficult one at times to detect, is probably easier than those challenges. I mean, we, look, we see rugby now every week, don't we? In the penalty area, blocking, holding, and we see a weak referee going in and saying, stop it, boys, 
yeah. park yourself and don't do it. They come out of the area, and I'm thinking, what a waste of time that is. Because when the ball's coming in, everybody's holding each other. And <laughs> like friends, overpower skill. Keith, it's, obviously we know now Howard Webb's going to become the new uh, Chief Refer- yeah. Refereeing Officer. Um, I mean, listen, we know there's VAR um, in the Premier League. I still don't think the officiating at times has been good enough by any stretch of the imagination. Do you think Howard will make a big difference? I think he's got to be given time. The answer is yes, but he's got to have a clear out because what we've got at the moment is we've got referees who are not fit enough, fast enough and accurate enough to referee at the Premier League level and therefore they should be either dropped down or or moved on. We've got to get this group of referees to be world-class for a world-class competition with world-class players, and we are some distance away from that. So if Howard wants anybody's support, he'll get it. He'll get my support if he requires it. But I think, genuinely, if he's been watching from America what's been going off here in the English Premier League and the Football League, because there's some referees that are getting paid as full-time officials in the, in the championship that didn't ought to be there either. So, yes, I'm harsh. But there's got to be a level of accountability brought in. And those, like, you know, like players who are not good enough for the championship, uh, sorry, for the Premier League or the championship, mm. they're moved on. Referees should be no different. Keith, Keith can I just quickly ask, I don't even know if you can answer this, but do you think since VAR was obviously introduced into the Premier League, that maybe referee and standards have dropped slightly because they've always got a way out now because VAR is still there now? I do believe that. And I think that... What VAR has done is created a group of lazy referees, over-reliant on VAR mm. and hesitant when in front of them they can see that a foul's committed and they should be pointing to the penalty mark. Yeah. You know, so for me, it has... But, but look, the process of a referee is to see, recognise, think and act. And when I see some of these referees that are professional and I help to introduce professional refereeing into England... Right, I don't see them putting in the level of work rate that is required at the Premier League and Championship level. It's got to be better. They've got to be more mobile. They've got to be fitter. They've got to be in a position to be able to see, recognise and make decisions more accurately than they have done. Uh, Keith, as always, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Thanks for your time. Are you all set for for Christmas, Keith? I'm all set for Christmas yep. and uh, I'll be missing a bit of football, won't I? Because it's not on, but yeah, I'm ready. Good stuff. Keith, Merry Christmas. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Time Thank then. you. Uh, right. Thanks, says Keith Hackett there, former Premier League referee. He was honest. Wow. He, he was. Yeah, no, Keith's good. Keith's yeah. good. Here's the thing. The, the one thing that, that frustrates me as a fan, and I thought that the World Cup showed you can actually deal with that, is towards the end of the game, time-wasting. Add on, add on all that tightly, yeah. Adding it on. Also, when there's a VAR decision, that never seems to be added up at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. I felt the World Cup got that right. Yeah. Because I, I, quite, I think Premier League need to introduce that. Or anybody. Did you? <laughs> seven minutes injury time, right? That's bring, fine. Bring it on. Ten minutes, that's fine. Bring it on. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.